Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of Academy on Air, in which we will talk about the fundamentals of ad promotion. My name is Nadia Said, and I am responsible for ad agencies based in EMEA. And joining me for this session is my colleague, Christina. Hi everyone, I'm Christina. I'm also an app specialist. However, I'm working with clients in the retail and entertainment industry. Great, so let's get started. Um, we will, in this fifth episode of Academy on Air, we will walk you through, first and foremost, the app's opportunity, why it's important for businesses to jump on this opportunity. Then we'll run through how machine learning empowers app campaigns. Once we've covered that, we'll provide you with the needed insights to set up app campaigns properly and ensure you're familiar with all the best practices. Lastly, we will do a quick recap and we will go through Q&A so that we can happily answer any questions that may arise during the session. So Nadia will kick us off with the app's opportunity. Great, so before we dive into the actual advertising solution that is app campaigns, let's first emphasize the significance of the app's opportunity and why if it's not on your radar yet, hopefully it will after this session. Apps are built for, the, for a wide range of utilities, whether it's for entertainment such as games, travel, day-to-day -day assistance, you name it. Regardless of the usage, the apps market is significant and so is the opportunity and will, it will only continue to grow further. If we put a value to the size of the apps market, we can say that the estimated value of transactions in apps by 2021 will be about $6.3 million. As previously mentioned, apps are used for a wide range of activities one of which is banking and personal finance. Let's take a look at Monzo, which is a bank based in the UK. When was the last time you actually set foot in the bank branch? Christina? Like, no. If so, no. <laughs> was it for something quick and easy, such as a transaction, or perhaps some, something much bigger, such as a mortgage? Either way, Monzo does not have any physical branches. Monzo is an app-only bank, and these types of banks are on the rise in Europe and their audience is focused on traditional lenders. You might also heard of N26, based in Germany, or Revolut. In this case, Monzo, which is a British startup, offers checking accounts and ATM cards, but it does not have any physical branches. Everything is done on the apps itself. But it's not just for commercial transactions that are driven the apps market. We've seen a large rise in apps that serves a social impact purpose. These are the apps that allow you to donate daily without noticing or feeding those in need or helping individuals that can see challenges they run while going about their day-to-day -day lives. In this specific example, Tarjimli provides a crowdsourced translation service for refugees. Millions of refugees and people in need of humanitarian assistance struggle with language barriers. Tarjimli then connects people who speak one language but need to speak in another language with people that speak with both languages. You might ask, what does this have to do with me as an advertiser? Well, everything. This change in the industry also signals a change in how consumers interact with the world around them. Apps are key in the day-to-day -day lives of the modern consumer. And as such, advertisers will have to accommodate for this changing landscape. And many businesses already do. In a study carried out by eMarketer, 30% of survey respondents believe mobile apps will have the biggest impact on their business over the next two to three years. So now that we all understand the significant opportunity of apps, let's dive into the actual advertising solutions itself. Let's start with how machine learning has empowered app campaigns. We won't go deep into it and we'll stick to the concepts that you hopefully all familiar with, and Christina will walk us through this section. Thank you, Nadia. So for those of you not familiar with the gentleman in this picture, it's our CEO at Google, Sundar Pichai. He also said that machine learning is a core transformative way by which we're rethinking how we're doing everything. This small and short phrase is incredibly powerful, and the reason why has to do with the key terms we have highlighted in blue for you. 
Machine learning is the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. This change is at the core of the app campaign migration. By transformative, we mean that the change is not incremental, it's not an evolution, it's a revolution. Rethinking means to revisit, not the same solutions to the same problems. It requires a mindset change. It requires all of us to think differently about how we go about our day-to-day -day at work, and in our specific case, how we go about advertising and marketing. By everything, there's almost nothing that machine learning doesn't touch already ads, consumer products, product design, development, sales, objection handling, troubleshooting, and more, you name it. So no surprise here that in addition to all our other advertising solutions, app campaigns are powered by machine learning. We previously used, and we still do, one-dimensional proxies to find great users to advertise to. These one-dimensional proxies can be anything from age, gender, device, to category. Now we've moved on to what we call multi-dimensional signals. So in addition to the signals we covered before, we're also looking at video watch time on YouTube, for example, or in-app purchases and browsing history. All these signals together help identify the most relevant customers to reach out to. As a result of this powerful transformation, app campaigns help you connect with the right user at the right time with ease. We'll dive a bit deeper into the workings of it all soon, but let's run through why and how app campaigns are beneficial for you as an advertiser. App campaigns provide better discoverability across all our networks in one campaign. App campaigns truly take away the complexity by allowing you to provide four lines of text, up to 20 images, 20 videos, and after that, it's all up to machine learning. So machine learning is doing the rest for you. Google's machine learning helps you to find more of the users you want in an all-in-one tool. You use your creativity and brain to set the direction, and we do the heavy lifting for you. In addition to understanding the benefits of app campaigns, it's key to note that the 20-80% rule can apply in the world of app advertising as well. What we mean by that is that it could well be that about 20% of your potential users contribute to more than 80% of the revenue, while about 80% of the users contribute to less than 20% of your app's revenue. This is a key principle to keep in mind as a challenge here is to truly understand which is which. So instead of trying to figure out that for yourself manually, let app campaigns and machine learning do all the heavy lifting for you. With more than 100 signals and more than 300 million combinations of these signals, it is impossible for any individual advertiser to do the analytics work manually and then also focus on the successful launch and optimization of the app campaigns. Lastly, and before we move on to the next section with Nadia, here are a few of those signal combinations that can be put together. This is to give you a transparent insight into what goes into the calculations. Measuring the right type and amount of user signals and interactions is now directly connected to the performance of your app campaigns and therefore more important than ever. So now I hope you feel uh, we have a good understanding of the apps opportunity and how machine learning has empowered app campaigns to make it easier for you as advertisers to grow you and your clients' businesses. Now we'll share with you on how to implement app campaigns while we do that. And we'll also give you a few tips and tricks and best practices along the way. So let's walk step by step through the creation of app campaigns. Number one, choose your goal and select your campaign. From app campaign installs, installs advance, actions or value. Secondly, set your bids and budget. The minimum requirements equals the daily budget, which is 10 times the target cost per action or TCPA or 50 times the TCPI or target cost per install target. Thirdly, create and upload your creative assets. Cover creative slots to unlock new inventory sources. Add a minimum of at least one video. Fourthly, choose your goal and select your campaign. Set up the conversion tracking, first open, first open or one install, and what at least one in-app action that collects a minimum of 10 conversions daily. When it comes to right goal and bit strategy, this is how you could go think about it. 
A would be to maximize app installs at efficient CPI. Go for app in, app campaigns installs bit using the CPI. And a good example of this is a gaming business launching a new game. Secondly, to maximize installs likely to perform an in-app action, go for app campaigns install advance bit using a CPI. A good example is the transportation app optimizing towards getting customers to their first ride. And if you're maximizing towards an in-app action or target CPA, you can use app campaigns for action and you bid using a CPA. And a good example here is the travel app optimizing towards flight bookings. Last but not least, we also have the app campaigns for value. To maximize in-app events at target ROAS, use app campaigns value and you bid using a ROAS. Here you can imagine an e-commerce app optimizing for percentage ROAS within a certain time frame, and this campaign is still in beta. So what this all boils down to is that you need to ensure the right bids in line with the value of the user. Some tips that you most likely practice in your day-to-day -day advertising activities are look at your past campaigns for guidance and the right bid, or once the campaign is live, you can leverage bid landscapes to estimate installs. Bid landscapes is a tool which you can find on the AdWords front end, and you can see what is the target CPI for the specific campaign in a specific geo. It is recommended that you have the optimal bids and budgets for running an effective UAC campaign. The ideal scenario is to keep the budgets uncapped so that the machine will have more space to learn effectively. If you can't, you can lower the bits manually or adjust the bits in other geos. Without much effort on your end, app campaigns create superb apps for you where they would pull out the images from the Play Store and then places the ads across numerous networks such as Play, Google search, YouTube, Chrome, and the Google Display Network. Great, so now let's dive into some best practices by asset types. So let's start with video assets. Make sure to cover the top aspect ratios on video. That includes landscape, portrait, and square. Make sure to grab the attention of your audience in the first two seconds. We've seen the conversion rates are highest with lowest CPI in the first quarter of the video. Use voiceover or verbal call to action as a conclusion. Upload different video lengths ranging between 15 to 30 seconds. And make sure to use different creative themes such as gameplay versus cinematic. Now let's go into best practices for image assets. So make sure to use simple designs with minimal but accurate text. These ads tend to appear on smaller screens, so make sure you're not overplaying the image assets. Use engaging relevant images directly from the app. Action shots, for example, for gaming, uh, products for shopping. Include App Store badges and your logo to give your ad credibility. Upload the maximum cap to allow app campaigns to serve different types of visuals for different users. And last but not least, upload different variations of the same asset. If you've seen that landscape images perform the best for a specific campaign, make sure you alternate uh, with different objectives. Last but not least, let's make sure to set up tracking for all relevant conversion actions. So this includes installs, first opens, and all the relevant in-app actions occurring in your app. Once this is tracked properly and accurately, it will allow you to best optimize for relevant installs and in-app conversions in order to predict reliably. So now let's dive into some case studies and some success stories we've seen with some clients. So Hepsi Burrata had um, wanted to take advantage of the high commerce period around Black Friday in order to drive more installs into their app. They wanted to find new app customers likely to make a purchase inside their app. Uh, 
In order to do so, they were really focusing on increasing retention and conversion volume. They saw great success. Uh, they were originally ranked in the 200th position inside the iOS and Android stores, and they managed to climb up to number one spot. Wow. So incredible success. They were the most successful app campaigns in Turkey relative to competitors. Another great success story is from Itona. So they wanted to drive high quality install and purchase events in core markets and new geos with the end goal of making positive ROAS. So their focus was truly to increase in-app purchase volume and ROAS. They identified potential APAC markets such as Japan and Korea for expansion beyond their core English speaking markets. And in order to do so, they utilized app campaigns for install and UAC for install advance for new regions first, and then they switched to app campaigns for actions, optimizing for purchases. So we can see great success in both of these stories. For Mytona, we saw a two times increase in ROAS quarter over quarter and a 109% increase in in-app purchase events. Wow, that was a lot to cover in this short amount of time frame. Let's quickly recap so your learning stick around. In summary, the apps opportunity is significant. If you're not already working with apps to grow you and your client's business, now is the right time. Machine learning, as what we've heard from Christina, has changed the game for online advertising. As you will note, it's a recurring topic that we discuss our advertising as we discuss our advertising solutions to you, and you can use it to your advantage. Running successful campaigns requires you to focus on setting the right goals, the right bids and budgets, and ensuring creative excellence and tracking impact and measuring success. As we've shown you, other businesses are using app campaigns successfully, so you can too. Great, so let's dive into some questions that have arisen uh, during the session. Okay, we do have a few questions online. So let's start with the text assets. Uh, okay. So there's a question around text assets and the best practices for that. Uh, we generally advise to have a very, very strong call to action that is going to be one of the most important tools within the text assets. Um, additionally, we also advise to use the language to work, geared towards your audiences. So try to communicate to your audiences relevant to your relevant audiences. Mm -hmm. And last, it, punctuation. Punctuation is extremely important. Uh, sometimes the different texts can be mixed and matched, mm -hmm. and sometimes they can also stand alone. So make sure that the text assets are read as you actually intended them to. Exactly, and on text assets as well, if your advertiser is expanding to new markets, we can also do a translation for you. So for example, if you have an advertiser based in Ireland, uh, where we are, and if they're looking to expand or if they want to expand, expand to say Spain or I don't know, Portugal, they could translate it to Spanish or Portuguese um, on the four lines of text on the UAC campaign. Yeah, definitely. Um, so the next question is around iOS versus Android. Um, do we see the same best practices for both? So in terms of the asset best practices, we do suggest to have the same strategy for both iOS versus Android. When it comes to bids, uh, we normally do suggest to bid a bit higher for iOS users. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, we see that iOS users have a higher loyalty rate mm -hmm. uh, and they turn to, tend to have a higher purchasing power. So these are definitely users that you will want to be able to reach uh, with your campaigns. Yep. Great. And so the third question, um, it's regarding videos um, and whether by not including videos, we can still serve in YouTube inventory. Um, so this is actually something Nadia touched upon during the session. Um, so UAC mm -hmm. will dynamically create videos and you, if you don't have any, and this is a great advantage because you will be able to serve in YouTube as well. Yeah, even if you don't have the videos. So yeah. it will pull um, the assets from the Play Store, yeah. the iOS Store, and you will automatically create the videos for you. Cool, great. I think this one. Looking to see if there's any more questions along the way, so keep them, 
I'm coming. Coming <laughs> to us. Uh, so what is the best bidding for starting an app campaign? So as we've mentioned before, it depends on which type of campaigns that you're looking at. If it's a UAC for installs campaign or a UAC for actions campaign. I'm just giving like the broader mm -hmm. um, examples here. And if you're going for UAC installs campaign, then the starting budget would be 50 times the target CPI or the cost per install. But if you're optimizing towards an action, so you're doing UAC for actions, then the optimal bid or the recommended mm -hmm. bid from us, the budget from us is 10 times the target cost per action or it's CPA. Yeah, exactly. So I think in terms of what app to start, what app campaign to start with, it really depends on the objective that you have internally in your business. Exactly. So if you really want to drive more user volume, then you would focus, as Nadia mentioned, on a install campaign first. Great. So I think um, if there are no more questions, we can, we can wrap, up. wrap it up. And perfect. Thank you for joining us and taking the time out of your busy schedules to learn about app campaigns. Hope you find it useful and looking forward to see you in the next episodes. Thank you. Thank you.